Welcome to Green Building Matters, the original and most popular podcast focused on the green building movement. Your host is Charlie Cicchetti, one of the most credentialed experts in the green building industry and one of the few to be honored as a lead fellow. Each week, Charlie welcomes a green building professional from around the globe to share their war stories, career advice, and unique insight into how sustainability is shaping the built environment. So settle in, grab a fresh cup of coffee, and get ready to find out why green building Matters. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the next episode of the Green Building Matters podcast, where I get to interview a green building professional somewhere in the world. Today, I've got Muhammad Abbasi with us. He's with WSP, and he is a healthy building and green building guru. And I can't wait to just learn more about his journey. So how are you doing today? Uh, great. Doing well. It's a perfect weather in Chicago. So uh, happy as long as the weather is good. I love it. Uh, same here in Atlanta, Georgia, where I'm based and recording this. And just, you know, that's the, the beauty of, of some of the virtual world we're in is we can do an interview like this and it's going to sound great. And I know you're going to inspire our listeners. So uh, I always like to just start with that origin story. So where did you grow up and go to school? So uh, I grew up in uh, Tehran, Iran. Like until uh, I got uh, 25, I was 26 years old. Uh, I, went, I did my bachelor degree in architecture there. And then after graduation, I was started practicing architecture for a couple of years. And then I, I came across an interesting opportunity to, uh, to do a post degree in Sweden. And uh, I did a one year degree there uh, with a professor studying on uh, sustainability in urban design and mostly doing research and uh, some really interesting activities there. And then I uh, ended up traveling for a couple of years and then coming to US. And then I did my Master of Architecture at IIT, Illinois Tech here in Chicago, and then ended up in the world of sustainability. Oh, wow. Three great schools and institutions. I One of my career highlights is I got to teach... Uh, a two-day well AP class in Stockholm, Sweden. And what a beautiful place. And just, it's I guess you're right, that, that environmental influence too. So yeah, I always like to ask, yeah, how'd you get that sustainability kind of itch? And it sounds like some of that was in your studies and anything else can you attribute to like getting into the green movement? Well, I, I, I can't tell. I've always been interested in sustainability. Like I, after finishing my bachelor, I've, I went to a lot of youth conferences and I was always part of the sustainability working groups. And I could tell uh, I'm interested in design from that aspect. Uh, but it really, the switch to consulting and sustainability and green building happened uh, when I had a course uh, when I had my MEP course in my master's degree. And that was the momentum in my life that when I, in the last session of the class, uh, my professor reached out to me and was like, ask a really transparent, straight question, asking, are you the perfect uh, student in your design studio? And I was like, no, I'm kind of average, but I think about sustainability. I think about design from a performance point of view. And he was like, you should do sustainability. That's what you are best at. And honestly, at that point, this is like uh, seven years ago, I didn't know I can have a career in sustainability. It's, uh, I mean, there, there were a couple of firms doing it, but I had, I had no clue about it. And oh. then, then his follow-up question was like, uh, what are you doing after graduation? I was graduating in a month. I was like, I'm going back home. I, I have an architecture practice there. And he was like, no, you should come and do an internship for me and like learn the other things that you can do. And I did that and he gave me the opportunity of like uh, doing sustainability consulting, energy analysis, high performance design for a year. And that's truly changed my uh, uh, that's truly changed my kind of uh, career and profession and become a sustainability consultant. Uh, you're right. Uh, sometimes we might think, oh, this has been around for a long time and it it's still not, right? We're still early in this movement. Still a lot of work to do. A lot of new job titles I've never heard of. They're just like, yeah. coming out, right, every six months. So so how about uh, mentors or just anyone along the way that maybe opened a door for you or someone you looked up to? Did you have any mentors along the way? So other than the guy that I just mentioned who was my yeah. professor and ended up uh, being my boss for a year or so, Sasha Arnand at DBHMS in Chicago. Uh, my first uh, manager at WSP, John Blade, was one of my best mentors. And he gave me the authenticity of 
how to be different and how to be myself and uh, just open my eyes to healthy building. So he was also a great mentor. Another person that also uh, used to be my professor at IIT, Matt Herman, who is also my current boss. He also kind of was one of the people that encouraged me to do sustainability when I was in a school and I had a couple of courses with him. And it's still kind of continuing doing the mentorship for me in different levels. Fantastic. So important for those those mentors. And uh, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing. When you look back so far on this career, and we'll connect the dots and talk about projects in a minute, but uh, what are some of your proudest accomplishments so far, a career and, and personal? I think I had a I had an interesting uh I worked on everything in sustainability. I was started doing a lot of energy models. I designed, uh, uh, I, I was a sustainability consultant for a net zero uh, a quick service restaurant, which was the first biggest uh, net zero restaurant in the world. And like it's, uh, then I did a lot of lead LBC uh, reset well projects for, uh, for a couple of pretty good universities and also a couple of like uh, community centers and those stuff. So I think, uh, I had a I had a journey of like doing uh, analytical works and also uh, high performance design to sustainability certification. And now that I'm leading healthy building services at WSP, I'm focusing on healthy buildings uh, for the most part. But I had a, I had quite a journey on yeah, to get there. What? So it's not yeah, not just some lead projects, some living building challenge projects. I know you've got lots of well credentials and air quality, and so it. I can tell you go all in. You, you love the credentials and, and becoming uh, well-rounded. So why don't I speak to that for a minute? Then we'll talk about some stuff you're doing today. Is, uh, what have credentials meant for you? Do, you? do you actually enjoy the process of studying, taking the exam, or, or is that, that that's laborious? So let's, uh, let's just uh, tell us about credentials. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, every year we have a, I have started the credential soup in Chicago that we hold it for young people. And I love it mainly, I mean, honestly, I'm not that interested in bragging and have them all next to my name. I have started to uh, to skip some of them to not have a pretty long <laughs> uh, signature at the bottom of my emails. But I love them because of learning. It's... Uh, it's like I know we can learn through so many ways, but uh, getting a credential and passing exams is like how I I, uh, I used to kind of like learn and have a goal and be prepared for something. I just got my BEMP like last month and uh, I got it mainly because I felt that I need that technicality. Uh, I'm, still, I'm not doing energy modeling anymore, but I needed to get that credential to to uh to learn more about the, the process and be able to speak to that. So that's how I look at credential and it's like they are quite successful. It's uh I don't believe that everyone should get all the credential that I did, but I strongly believe in credentials. Like they are great for learning, they are great for young people to get the job, they are great to recognize your knowledge and Make sure that you're you're relaying that to the people that you work with, and yeah, I can. There are a ton of good things that I I, I can talk about credentials. Uh, thank you. I'm I'm a big fan too, as you know. And yep. uh, so everyone listening, make sure you're getting at least that lead green associate. Venture into well or fit well, but now you can take a look here at Ahmed's, uh credentials, and and you have some really really impressive ones. And I, I know you've used it as a, a building performance specialist and now healthy building specialist. And, and I can tell you've leaned into each one. Um, so tell us about today, for those that don't know a lot about uh, WSP and, and the, you know, the built ecology side, just tell us a little bit about your company and, and then also a peek into what's a day-to-day like for you. So uh, I, uh, I work for WSP. I'm based in Chicago and WSP is, if not the biggest, but is one of the biggest engineering companies in the board. And, uh, like especially in the past couple of years, uh, our company been focusing a lot on sustainability because of our president vision around climate change. And I'm part of a, the built ecology team that does sustainability within buildings. And uh, it's uh, I lead our healthy building services, but still I manage like uh, our our other type of projects. Two projects that I'm really proud of these days is we do a ton of well projects. And also I, I do lead our 
uh, well performance testing uh, team that we go in and we verify projects. We measure a bunch of things to make sure that air quality, thermal comfort, water quality is is all on track, and we certify projects on that. But the project, the well project that I'm really proud of, uh, is we are uh, we are uh, we are helping a, a community center, a health community center in Milwaukee that provide health benefits for homeless. And it's uh, that's a project. We do a lot of well projects for high rise residential commercial buildings, but that's the one that I'm truly proud of because we are adding a ton of value and the show that well and our services a healthy building, green building is inclusive for everyone. The other project, which is kind of similar, we are we are supporting a, a women black owned energy services in Detroit that is supporting energy services for their communities uh, to design uh, to uh, to design their new net zero office in Detroit. And what we have done in that job that I really loved was like not only do the design for them, but we we taught them the process. We we issued the whole separate document to tell them that we would love you to get the knowledge from us and transfer that to your community. I mean, oftentimes that's something that I'm like, I understand sometimes uh, we need to kind of like uh, keep the process to ourselves. But in, in, in so many cases like that, we have tried to relay the information to the community so that that can spread around. Yeah, because we can design and build the Tesla of a building or the healthiest building systems, but if we're also not showing them how to run it, right, once we move on, sometimes it's so important. Here's how you can continue, and here's what you really need to know. And and it sounds like that some of your excitement is is in part some of some of that handoff. And what else could we do? Um, you know, you probably can't talk about all the projects, but just you know, do you do you work on a, a large number at any given time? Do you do you get to do some research? Just you know, where do you see yourself spending a little extra time in your role? Yeah, I mean, like it's uh, in day-to-day basis, I I think I would manage like eight to 10 projects at a given time, a mix of lead, well, living building challenge project. I I have like uh, two living building challenge projects uh, on my plate, two reset projects. So I have a mix of like almost all of the certification plus uh, net zero design and energy services. And that's what I'm interested in. Like okay. uh, I still uh, I still like to get engaged in delivering the work, but I'm really interested to manage multidisciplinary services to show that sustainability. All of the things that we do, they are not their own isolated contained things. They're all related together. And uh, that's my interest. Uh, and that's what I do in my day to day. And we also do a lot of research. Like it's just earlier this year, uh, I did a research on the fact that we need mechanical ventilation in residential buildings. And the concept of uh, office and home office is changing. And like in a city like Chicago, it's still the, co- the ventilation code doesn't require uh, like mechanical ventilation and you can get away with uh, with natural ventilation, which is not the case in a cold winter in Chicago. So I did the whole research to show that we need fresh air in residential. And that's what that's, uh, I mean, obviously when we do research in industry is exactly to what we need. I still work with academia. I'm a guest lecturer at IIT and hopefully other schools. I love uh, being in touch with the schools, learn from them and apply them, and perhaps sometimes we collaborate with them too. Wow, you're right. Uh, Sometimes those codes can make it a challenge when we know the best practice. We know we need more fresh air, but over here it's saying, no, you you can't do that, or or, it's interesting. Um, Okay, so let's talk about the future. Let's pretend you had a crystal ball. What do you think is next? What are you reading up on? What are you excited about in this green building movement? Well, I guess it's, I'm excited for the future. That's what I, I can say in the beginning. I'm really excited to what's coming to sustainability and how we are, uh, how we are thinking about sustainability, be part of every project, be part of the policies, requirements and everything. So for that, uh, I'm really excited to what's uh, falling up for the sustainability profession because it used to be a service for some projects, for a few number of projects, but now it's getting... Uh, implemented in corporate level, in portfolio levels, and in every project that's getting built. I'm really excited about ESG reporting and how that is impacting the way that we design buildings. I'm really excited about a lot of policies, bills, and laws that are coming that is changing our industry, like the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, 
like us collectively in our team spend a lot of time learning that because it's that's going to transform green building, no doubt. And I think that's the exciting part. Definitely certifications like LEED took the initiative and championed that. But the reality is that is getting much, much bigger. And like, uh, I'm really excited for the next version of LEED to come in and also have uh, more connection with the ESG. But it's uh, we had a boom for sustainability. We are continuing to have that boom. And uh, it's I think it's going to be the future is, is going to be more... It's going to be different and it's going to be more exciting. It's going to be more inclusive. It's going to be, it's going to, it's going to impact everyone, not, uh, not a few number of projects. I'm excited about the future too. I love your enthusiasm towards what's next and it's all coming fast and it's going to be very beneficial. Um, let's talk about you more. Uh, let's get to know you a little bit more. What would you say is your specialty or gift? Uh, my specialty in my, like, uh, in my technicality or like uh, work. Well, why don't you answer both? So yeah, sure. Why don't you give me the technical specialty? But but if you were to ask your colleagues in general, you know, what's your specialty or gift? Uh, I would say like people oftentimes know me as healthy building person. Uh, people, a person that knows about air quality, thermal comfort, water quality, circadian lighting. Uh, that's that's my knowledge that like I get approached from people from like different places from WSP invading UK, Asia, Middle East. Uh, but what I think, at least I like to be good at, I, I'm not, I can't say, I mean, it's like, it's not that humble to say that this is my gift. But I think what I like to do the best is having authentic engagement and communication with my clients and the people I work with. I believe sustainability is day-to-day problem solving and unique cases. And I like to be that person that do problem solving pretty well in, a, in an authentic, unique way uh, uh, on project specific, cases specific uh, cases. So that's what I, I'm not saying I'm the best in that, but I like to be the best on that. That's very good, man. Um, thank you for sharing. And do um, you have any good habits or routines or rituals? Well, I think what I, uh, I mean, the pandemic was really hard. And like I ended up, like many other people, I ended up like doing a lot more hiking, a lot more camping, and uh, obviously a lot more cooking and baking. I think that's what that was the cliche during the pandemic that like uh, we were all baking, we were all learning how to bake everything that we used to buy. But the my daily ritual, and I'm still maintaining some of those outdoor activities, uh, and I used to do them in the past as well. But these days, my routine that I enjoy the most is taking my box in the morning. Uh, and bike to the office from Lakeshore Trail in Chicago, which is you get to see the lake for half an hour or 40 minutes. And then by the time I get to the office, I'm really fresh. I'm really uh, active. And it's, uh, it's that, that gives me the energy. And the same thing in the afternoon, like taking the same trail, seeing the, the lake and the weather is still pretty nice. And that relaxed me after uh, a long uh, day as well. So that's the... That's a routine that is giving me a ton of energy these days. Man, thanks for sharing. Are, are there any hiking trails uh, that you want to hit uh, near you or just, just venture out? There's a good trail near you. Well, the, the reality of Chicago is almost flat. I mean, like, right. when you, so the, the nearest uh, actual trail uh, is like, uh, is, in, is in Wisconsin, like two hours away. But there is a, there is a trail that, I would consider it trail near Chicago. Like it's called uh, Orange Palace, which is like half an hour west of my place. That's usually where I go. It has a lake that I can sit and have my tea. But that's a place I go on like weekly basis. Amazing. Thank you. Well, that's a good segue to my next question, which is a bucket list. I'm a fan of the bucket list. What are one or two things maybe on your bucket list? Any travel or adventure? Maybe you want to write a book? I don't know. What's on the bucket list? Well, I guess the one that is not necessarily lame, but it's anticipated is uh, I want to travel more. I I used to travel. I've been to like 35 countries before coming to US, but I ended up, I've been working hard in the in the last six, seven years. So I really want to have a, sabbatical at some point and uh, travel 
uh, for uh, for uh, for six months to the countries I never been to. I never been to Latin America. I've been to Africa, but I didn't explore it well. I'd like to go back to to Asia and see how things been changed uh, since I visited them. And I'm hearing that from people. So I'm really, I mean, traveling is one like traveling is definitely a big thing on my list. Doing something, uh, doing something more inclusive for sustainability is also something on my list uh, that uh, come up with some framework or uh, some educational program that like underserved communities, not only in US, but everywhere around the world can, that can benefit from. That is a little bit related to my work, but it's also, it's something that, uh, uh, that I'm cooking in my mind to do when I, when I get to my 40s, do something for more, for more public benefit around climate change. Man, that's exciting. And, and, and I hope you get that time off and get to travel more and then come back and do more good. And, you know, but each project, right, we work on. And I think to our listeners of the Green Building Matters podcast, sometimes you need to zoom out. Like if you're working on one project, it is going to influence others and they're going to make change in their next projects. But also that one project is better for the environment or a healthier space for the people that are going to be in it, a school, a church an office exactly. building. And so so don't think you're not doing a good job, listeners, making a big impact. It has ripple effect. And I, I can't wait for you to do more good. Let's talk about books. Um, is there a book you'd recommend? It doesn't even have to be about buildings. Well, the book that I, uh, I, I tell my colleagues uh, these days, and I had a lot of conversation around it, is uh, there's a book uh, called Emotional Intelligence by... Uh, Dan uh, Goldman, I believe. And it's it's something I found really, I, I read it a long time ago. Uh, I, I, read it, I read it again recently to tell more about that to people because I feel that's a perfect book uh, for the work that we do and also for these days. Uh, the other book is that I read recently, which is like directly related to my work is uh, Healthy Building by Joe Allen from Harvard. That's also a pretty good book. I mean, but honestly, like I'm not a big reader. I uh, I I listen to a lot of podcasts, mostly Persian, <laughs> so it's probably not going to be useful for our, your audiences. But it's uh, I yeah I like uh, uh, and I I I'm an I'm a sci-fi nerd, so I can tell you a list of like uh, sci-fi books by like uh, Philip Dick or others like uh, around how the future is going to look like. Uh, like and like one of my dream jobs is always like do and research for those companies like Marvel about tell them how the future could look like with climate change, air quality crisis. So I, that's, that's, uh, I also read a lot of like novels and like sci-fi is around that too. Man, thanks for sharing. I know we might need this green comic book series or something. Maybe we can work on that. Yeah. All right. Two, two more questions here. I'm, I'm really enjoying to get to know you more. Uh, one is about career advice. Is there anything you wish you'd have known earlier in your career? Um, yeah, one thing that, yeah, one thing that I guess like is not like I don't know what can I call it the opposite of advice, but one of the advices and suggestions I've been getting a lot in my early career was like uh, telling me that I'm a good fit to be a head down and do energy modeling, and I guess that that was coming from people biases about like. The other people they have seen. And I think that's a strong bias uh, that we need to overcome. But I've been getting that a lot. And it took me like a couple of years to figure out that I'm better in sustainability. And like a couple of people, like John Mullet, that I mentioned the name, they made a role to tell me that, no, if if like most of people look like me, they do energy modeling, that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm going to be a good energy modeler, even if, I'm, if my math is good. So some people like him helped me to understand that, no, I could be a good sustainability consultant, even though like, like unfortunately, we don't have a pretty diverse sustainability pro, uh, consultant uh, profession. But like that's, that's one of the things that like I've been getting some mixed advices from people and I was confused for a while. But now that's what I'm trying to give to kind of like people in early careers too. But well, I know you are now the mentor to others. So it's fantastic. Um, well, the last thing here, let's say there's someone that's listening to your story. They're listening to the Green Building Matters podcast and they're getting real excited. They, they've decided to jump in. You know, it could be a, 
uh, someone getting out of high school or college, or it could be someone that has had a career and they're like making a shift and they want to do this green building work that you do, that I do, and and, and we need some help. Um, what words of encouragement do you have for them as we come to a close? Well, one thing that I think is important that uh, I I have a hard copy of that for myself at, at home to remind myself that oftentimes we forget that sustainability is what we make living out of it, but we are fighting a bigger battle here. Like a lot of times I feel we get back to the conversation of bottom line business case, but we are fighting a bigger battle here. I mean, climate change is more real. And this is, I think, something that people are hearing, but I don't mind giving them another alert uh, here too, that this is our business, this is our life, but this is also, we are championing a, a really great cause here that we should be committed to that and remind ourselves every day when we wake up that, yes, I'm going to work eight hours today, but I'm also an activist. I'm also fighting a big battle here. And it's uh, for, for young people and, and like especially people that are considering sustainability is like, I think authenticity and uh, being yourself is a huge thing in this field. And uh, this is this is one of those fields that if people want to be their self and just like do what they're excited about, this is a great industry for it. It's a great industry. We need your help. We need your enthusiasm. And, and look at the career here that we've been able to go through. So, uh, Muhammad, thank you so much for your time. Keep up the great work. And I know we'll see you at the Green Build Conference coming up soon. Yeah, sure. Excited. Thank you, man. Thank you, Charlie. I just want to say thank you to our loyal listeners. We actually are celebrating over one year here on the Green Building Matters podcast. Me and the entire team were stoked and just so glad you continue to listen every Wednesday morning to a new interview with a green building professional here in this industry or just some pro tips that we want to make sure that you are getting straight from us, straight to you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Green Building Matters podcast. At GBES.com, our mission is to advance the green building movement through best-in-class education and encouragement. Remember, you can go to GBES.com slash podcast for any notes and links that we mentioned in today's episode. And you can actually see the other episodes that have already been recorded with our amazing guests. Please tell your friends about this podcast. Tell your colleagues And if you really enjoyed it, leave a positive review on iTunes. Thank you so much, and we'll see you on next week's episode.